The most success that I've seen from networking is networking within your network. Nowadays, we're looking, for, when we think networking, it's, okay, how can I find someone that's gonna come into my ecosystem and help me level up? Okay, so I think there's levels to networking, right? <laughs> do I wanna meet somebody that's like-minded? That could be a space of, of networking, right? Mm -hmm. But do I wanna meet somebody so I can go to the next level? I think that's difficult. And I say I think it's difficult because you essentially have to grow and change in the process. That person has to see the shift in you for them to continuously want to help you. Unless somebody just like, okay, you could kind of be a project for me. But when you kind of like networking up and they see a value in you and you see a value in them, but the value is totally different, they got to see a shift in you. You can't show up as who you were yesterday yeah. in order to try to maneuver in this new space of networking. I'm Simeon Pando. Hey. I'm Melvin Gray. This is another episode of Nice and Me. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. What's the deal, family? First and foremost, I want to thank you guys for joining us today for another episode. As you guys know, we love to have meaningful conversations here uh, that provide women of understanding and give the fellas a voice. Uh, we pride ourselves on growing, and it would mean the world to us if you guys just stop right now and subscribe to our channel, all right? We appreciate it, and we hope you guys enjoy the episode. Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan, and this is another episode of the number one podcast in all of Los Angeles. Yes, nice sir. Nice and neat. What's up, fellas? What's the deal, bro? What's happening? What's happening, man? So listen, what are we talking about today, man? Okay. 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 What are we okay. talking about today, man? So look. A couple of weeks ago, it was the Super Bowl. Omar went out to the Super Bowl, and he did some heavy, heavy networking, not just for himself, but on the back of Nice and Neat. Man, I, I see people post all the time, you know, everybody who passed on me, you know, the price went up now, right? And I see that, but I feel like networking is only significant, and it truly only works when that person is parallel. It's hard to network with somebody. Oh, up and down yeah. mm -hmm. it's very difficult to network with somebody up and down yeah. when somebody's parallel it's easier to be like hey yo we should do something and he'd be like you know what we should do something yep uh -huh. i'm glad that you brought that to me i've been kind of thinking about that myself i've been seeing what you've been doing you, i've been right. Seeing, right because and i'm sure we all have been there because we are pretty ambitious men and there have been times where i reached out to somebody and i wanted to connect and i was just like okay i'm just not there yet yep mm -hmm. I'm just not there yet, and no and hard and there's no hard feelings. It's okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna resent you when when it is time for us to be there. I'm not gonna look at you and be like, "Yo, you passed up on me," and 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 be upset about it. You know, because I'm sure there's plenty of people who reach out to me and I don't even reply to them because I don't see the value yet. Yep. So I I think about it right, and I even think about times where we try to get guests on the show and somebody may not reply or, you know, quote unquote, big time us and we could hold our feelings or harbor our feelings, but eventually, you know, they'll reach out and, you know, eventually they'll show up and they'll do it, you know, or we just not oh, there yet. Oh, yeah. we just not there oh, yet. we just not there yet. Uh, and, and I feel like speaking to that place of not being there yet, right, when you have tried to network with somebody or reach out to somebody and they didn't get back to you, how did you navigate the space of them not getting back to you? Them not, you even not even feeling respected. Not saying it's disrespected. You just mm -hmm. didn't feel respected. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you navigate the space? Man, I I think some at some point in college, a friend, a close friend of ours told me, man, when you're on the quest to like accomplishing something, you really want to hear multiple no's. You know, so like in situation like that, even though I will, I, I'm one of the people that will feel disrespected, even though they're not disrespecting. Mm -hmm. I will feel not disrespected. I will feel not respected. Is there a difference between disrespected and not? I think we need to normalize saying I didn't feel, feel respected. respected. I didn't feel respected. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't feel respected in that moment, it, um, it still encouraged me to want to go and receive that feeling again because it, it, I was, I guess, conditioned through my like teenage years to, to know that, that that's going to help you get closer to the actual yes that you're looking for or the collaboration that you're looking for. So even though they tell you no and, and or you feel like from them, you're not getting the respect that you feel like you deserve and you're not there yet. For me, in those moments, it's always been like, well, use this as, as a as a as an opportunity to be inspired to go get some more no's so we can get closer to that yes. Now, 
that's just not easy because in the moment you're feeling like, man, I, I feel so prepared for this moment. I feel like, like, why aren't they seeing me? Why, why aren't, why am I, aren't I getting recognized for the opportunity to build and collaborate with this person? But, um, you know, if you could continue on pushing forward, I, I feel like, and, I, and this has happened to me. I feel like you will get to the, the collaboration, the yes, or the unlock the level that you're looking for, but you can't let that just put you in a hole to where you're not trying it anymore, you know? Yeah. It's thing sometimes. Sometimes you reach out to people and you think, oh yeah, we equally yoked. Or I, I feel like, you know what? I could provide value, they can provide value. And you reach out to somebody and they don't respond. And I never really take it as disrespect, but it does sting. Mm -hmm. But I'm fair though, because I don't respond to everybody. Yeah. So I always got to take that into account. Sometimes I don't respond and I don't say, I don't think, yo, I, I'm disrespecting you or I don't like you or anything. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just haven't painted a clear picture of how this would benefit us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you just say, hey, you need to have me on a show, I'm not going to ask you, what do you talk about? I'm just going to go on your page and look for myself. Okay, does this person have the thing? Does, is this person in alignment with us? And if he's not or she's not, then I won't respond. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's me understanding that, okay, well, maybe maybe I don't have my own, I don't have a large enough uh, community. Yep. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I haven't created enough buzz around my own name or our name, mm -hmm. right? So, because, you know, people people follow the trend. Once everybody like you, then it's just like, okay, this is a guy I've seen before. I know everyone likes him, so I can work with this person just from the simple fact of that, even if there's nothing in alignment. Sometimes people work with you off of, you know, what you guys do. Sometimes people work with you based on the audience you guys have, mm -hmm. right? So it's just like, all right, well, I could do two things. I could just get better at the craft and then provide more value, or I could just appeal to everyone else and become so big that people feel like they missing out. You know what I mean? And when people feel like they're missing out, they always are willing to Come collaborate. On. Yep. So I know people are listening right now and, you know, some people are like, yo, I, I go through those channels, I meet people and, you know, the OJ's got a song and they smile in your face, right? <laughs> yep. And we met in person and everything was good and we exchanged information and we said we're going to collab. I got you. We said that we would. And now I reach out, it's crickets. Mm hmm when people are experiencing that and it's like, I did everything that I was supposed to do to network. I, I did the icebreaker. I connected with him. We were at a great event and you know, I reached out and I didn't hear anything back from them. How do you navigate that space? Is that just a part of this, the receiving the nose? Is that just a part of it? Like, how do you, how would you navigate that space? You just accept it. Mm -hmm. You just accept it. Everyone like at this point in time, Everyone is not a man of their word mm -hmm. or a woman of their word. We know that. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of times where people say, "Yo, I'm gonna come," and they've never and we, I've never seen you a day in my life after that. You get what I'm saying? And it's just accepting it because there's too many other opportunities, you know. And people have things going on in their life. Yep. You just don't know. I may just not feel like it. Yep. I may have lost a parent, had a kid, not yep. feeling myself. I don't know. Yeah. So those are the things that we got to take into consideration all I, the time. I think that's great. It's just not. Judging, don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. Some, some, because sometimes it's not. And it's I one think of the four I, agreements. Yeah, I think what you said is is incredible. Because I was just listening to something other other day. I was talking about just having giving people grace and understanding. And you don't know what someone is going through either. Never. You you never know. So like mm -hmm. the person you could have reached out at a at a terrible time. You know what I mean? Um. So I, I would say just don't take it personal too. Adding to Duke's point because your personal feelings could end up ruining what could be something great later on yeah. down the line. You know, that yeah. that could have just didn't connect because of timing. Yeah. So I, I think for me, right, as far as the like the best way that I've seen, the most success that I've seen from networking, the most success that I've seen is networking within your network. And that's kind of what bring things parallel. Even if somebody feels out of reach, but if they're in your network already, and I mean in your network in a sense of, Duke, if I had a friend that you wanted to connect with or if Omar you had somebody who was in your acting class that I wanted to connect with and you guys were already tight I feel like you kind of get the silent stamp of approval mm -hmm. through your through your network mm -hmm. 
So I feel like that's been the thing that's been the most beneficial for me. Anytime I ever kind of just wanted to like make a cold a cold connection, it's been through somebody who's already connected or affiliated w- within my network. Mm-hmm. It's been people who's popped up at the shop off of the back of you guys that I didn't know. But once you mention your name, it's okay. good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. look, I'm, I'm listening. It's yeah. good. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think where it gets difficult is when you're like, hey, you know, I want to change. You know, I want to kind of have a, when you were stepping into fashion, Duke, I want more of a fashion network and I want it now. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do we best navigate moving towards a new network? And I honestly think it's actually, because I'm in the space now, putting yourself in the most uncomfortable positions that you just never did it before. Mm -hmm. Like, I go to council meetings now. Yep. It's so surreal to me that I am in council meetings <laughs> and I am having conversations with people who I never thought I'd be sitting down talking to uh, with councilmen for different cities and different different levels of connections that I never thought that I'd be connecting with. But I just used everything that I used before and then just try to bring it to this new arena. Mm-hmm. And some of those things could have been connecting to your friends, connecting to your friends' networks, and then just kind of bringing that to the arena. Obviously, you got to tweak things a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you definitely have to tweak things a little bit. But I think, honestly, for our audience, I think networking is tough. Mm -hmm. I think networking is very difficult. I don't think networking is easy. I see, you know, especially as women transition into different phases of life, whether it's you were once the party girl and now you just in a serious relationship. And it's like, well, where do I just now find people that I could just have a drink with that's not trying to go somewhere afterwards? That's a part of networking. And I think that's tough to step outside of what was once comfortable. Mm-hmm. Do you think though networking is hard though? Because we try to find the ideal person to network based on social media. You understand what I'm saying? So we try to really like look to see, okay, is this person popping? Does this person have things going on? Do people know this person? Before we decide to, okay, now I actually want to hang with this person. Or I think I want to actually get to know this person further. Because I feel like social media, nowadays we're looking, for, when we think networking, it's, okay, how can I find someone that's going to come into my ecosystem and help me level up? Okay, so I think there's levels to networking, right? <laughs> do I want to meet somebody that's like-minded? That could be a space of, of networking, right? Mm-hmm. But do I want to meet somebody so I can go to the next level? I think that's difficult. And I say I think it's difficult because you essentially have to grow and change in the process. Mm -hmm. That person has to see the shift in you Mm -hmm. for them to continuously want to help you. Unless somebody just like, okay, you could kind of be a project for me. But when you kind of like networking up and they see a value in you and you see a value in them, but the value is totally different. They got to see a shift in you. Like there has to be a bit of a shift. You have like, for example, let's use DC Youngfly, right? Mm -hmm. DC Youngfly was successful. And he was a comedian and he was funny. And, you know, what they would call it, he did the Chitlin Circuit. The Chitlin Circuit would be considered just the small arenas in the South. Mm-hmm. You go, he could do that and he could do a couple of other things and, like, the black community knew him. There was a certain shift that had to happen for them to trust him to start hosting shows now. And I say the shift has to happen in him before they can receive him. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a part of networking that is difficult because there you can't show up as who you were yesterday yeah. in order to try to maneuver in this new space yeah. of networking. We will see each other. I could see, for example, I've seen O out and I've seen him. I'm like, man, you're real smiley and giggly when you're around when you're around this group of people. It's like, man, you know what? Sometimes you gotta you gotta let people in and and let them get the best parts of you so they could open up as well, whatever they're trying to open up to you. He can't just be mm-hmm. straight face and, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to speak how I want to speak. Nah, you're going to articulate a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to step that up. I feel like the hardest part for me for networking to be completely candid is always being aware. I'm aware of my posture. Mm-hmm. I'm aware of the way that my eyes are looking in somebody else's eyes. I'm aware of what I'm saying. I'm aware of the way I'm positioning myself in the room. Mm -hmm. And as I'm moving into spaces of networking, I feel like that is one of the most pivotal things that I had to lock in. And when when it's us and we're kicking it, I don't don't need my posture to be good. I don't Mm -hmm. need to look at you guys a certain way because we're we're networked. 
We're good. I can ask you guys for whatever I need and I could get it without having to put in any work. These people, these new people that you're maneuvering around with, they need to see, like, why do I want to invest in Owen Duke? Why do I want to invest in Jalan? And I think that's what makes networking tough. Yeah. I think uh, uh, another way to say that, too, is having a real sense of clarity before you head into your networking event or whatever it is that you're doing around networking. Because I would say, like, even a couple weeks ago for the Super Bowl, right, I'm in Las Vegas for it. And Duke, you're familiar with Radio Row. Yep. You're familiar with Radio Row. For those that aren't, it's a, just imagine like a conference room, hotel conference room full of 100 uh, radio stations from around the, around the U.S., right? So it's, it's, it's huge media um, opportunity for different publications, athletes, and, and entertainers. And, you know, prior, prior to this past week or this past time of me going, uh, even me being in there, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go network. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm going to grab some contacts and... I hit you up, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. But part of the reason why all I just have 1,200 contacts in my phone of people that I'm not using is because prior to this last time of me going, I wasn't really sure about like why I wanted to even network with the person. Like, yeah, I want to network because people say you got to network, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, cool. I'm going to go network. I'm going to go link with people, right? But I'm not really sure why I'm connecting. or I'm not even sure what I'm offering them at this moment. Mm -hmm take it to this past time with me going I'm like very clear I'm like hey I have a podcast I'm really trying to get the NFL to get behind it in any way that I possibly can like and it, it becomes a different conversation you get different answers and different responses from people when you're very clear about what you're looking for why, what you, you're, why are you here why are you here <laughs> why are you here like yeah I know yeah I know you, your personality and yeah. whatever it is you're, you're supposed to be in the building that, that's good that's good that's good but what can you like Jelana said it, you just touched yeah. on it. What are you offering? Yeah. What what can you bring of value to this table? Mm -hmm. You know? And that was something that really clicked for me this past time, this past weekend of me actually being at a networking event. It was like, damn, the difference in my mindset is completely different because I have such a, a great amount of clarity about where I want to go. Yeah. Like I'm not confused about where this train is headed. Mm -hmm. This train is headed in one direction, and I'm looking for people to come partner, sponsor, to get involved. Mm -hmm. It's very clear. It's very. I'm not like, and every conversation is 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 met with that energy and that that intent, you know. So I think you know that's a big thing too. Is just making sure that you have some clarity about like what you're looking for yeah. in this event or out of socializing with these people because just like I said, we all got 1,200 contacts of people that we'll never talk to again. Right, but we got their contact for the sake of networking. But you know, when the, when there's not a, a a a precise intention and clarity around why you're doing it, then it just becomes you know just conversation. Which don't get me wrong, it serves as great practice. Hmm. Like I I'm not gonna say that like networking just a network is bullshit because sometimes when you're young, it is beneficial. And oh, it's, it's it's a season where you need to just be seen. You need you need to be you need to be mumping your gums. Yeah. You need to learn how to get in and out of conversations. You need to learn how to be adaptive to other people's lingo. You need to learn how to move. You you and part, I wanted to say something too. One of the things that I've never worried about when I go into the rooms is what you were talking about, like the posture and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and I don't know about you, Duke, but because of like I've had so much media training, yeah. You know, I'm kind of like always on my p's and q's. But I think that's something real that people need to be take like have some real awareness about yeah it, how are you standing how are you interacting with people how are, like um are you inviting enough to people you know what i mean do you make people feel welcome enough to even have the conversation these are all things that tie into you actually having a successful networking time you know so what's the one thing that you want to display when you walk into a room confidence okay i want to exude confidence at all times okay because i've had people come up to me and be like hey bro i don't know what you do i have no idea i have no yeah. idea what you do but i'm trying to be around it and i'd be like ha ah. and those 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 interactions end up in great end up being great relationships mm -hmm. off of me just exuding confidence mm -hmm. so i would say confidence more than anything even if you don't necessarily feel comfortable in talking about what you're talking about but you have some clarity around it and if you have confidence mm -hmm. you're gonna be golden you know, but once once you break the ice, mm -hmm. it's just gonna flow. But you want, if you I want people to say, "Who's that?" That's it. That's what you want to leave with. You want to leave with that who's lasting that? impression. Yeah. Who's that dude with the beanie on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. Who's that? that? Man, that dude has he has some strong I presence. Know, I don't know what's wrong. Who's that? Hey, yo, who, who's, hey, who, that? who's that guy? 
That's what you want. That's what you want. That's what you want. You know, I think I think th that that opens doors for you. And so that's another reason why it's even even more important to like be specific, have intention, and have clarity about what yeah. you want. Because if you walk with that confidence, a door gonna open. A door's gonna open. You don't want to be like timid to walk through the door. You know what I mean? Because you walk in with confidence in a place, looking good, smelling good, feeling having some mm -hmm. clarity. Something's gonna happen for you. you just, so you got to be ready for that. You know, mm -hmm. those those are definitely things that I'm thinking about today going into networking that I wasn't really thinking about five, 10 years how, how ago. Does, how does networking change for you guys when you guys are going into a space where you guys know everyone is more successful or smarter than you? I'm like, oh, said, I have to be really dialed in, right? Because I think success is a lure because somebody can be successful in a whole different lane. It has nothing to do with what you work trying to work toward. And mm -hmm. it's like, if I'm just attached to them, I'll be good. And then you just got somebody's contact and they don't know why y'all met you don't know why y'all met they just like oh cool even if you was even if you were impressionable and you were solid you guys can't really make nothing shape i think it's super important again to like you said hone in let's say you're going to we do podcasting if you go into an event let's say for example you're going to a podcasting event and you you scan the room and you see everybody's podcast is successful and then you're like hey yo that's the president of spotify if you just know that's the president of Spotify and you go talk to him, like, what are you trying to accomplish, though? Like, it's cool that he's in the room. Like, that's great. But if you don't know what you're trying to do, hey, yo, we want to get we want to get more ads ran through our, our platform. How does that look on the Spotify platform? What does it look like? Hey, the deal that such and such has, you know, how do we start working towards that? Hey, I just want to introduce myself. This is my podcast. We want. But if you don't have what you want to accomplish... And you have to do that before you get into the room. Yeah, that's the homework. That's the homework. Yeah. That's the thing about networking. This is why you have to be concise and understand exactly what it is you're trying to achieve. I sit down and me and Brittany, we talk about it all the time. Like, hey, this is my career path. This is what I'm trying to take. You know, I'm trying to, if I'm trying to work on, if I want to work on nice and neat, what does this season of nice and neat look like? Forget the end goal. What does the season look like? Cool. Ask questions towards the season. Because I feel like a lot of times we look at what our end goal is, what the Z is, and that person could recognize you ain't even did B yet. Mm -hmm. So you sitting here asking me about, you sitting here asking me about getting featured on Spotify, and you you guys haven't even, you guys aren't even syndicated. What's going on? What's going on here? I get that you have a podcast. That's great, bro. Yep. But like, I'm not the step right now to be talking to. Yeah. I'm the end guy. You guys talk to Karen over there. I'm not the guy. And I don't ever want somebody to feel like. I don't want. You know what? I don't want to create the space for somebody to feel like I talk to him prematurely, even if they are above. Correct. I don't want them to feel like he didn't do his homework before he came and talked to me because I know how distasteful that is. So mm -hmm. if you end up in a room with someone like that, the end guy, and you know you're not ready, you not speak to him? No, it's an intro, and nah, that's it. Now nah, you definitely gotta go. If you're in the right, if you're in that space, you okay. gotta go brush shoulders. Okay. We yeah. got, we gotta at least have. If we can have just a, a hey, I'm just, I just want to come over, and introduce myself. Mm -hmm. okay. I, that's I'm in it. This, I'm in the space. Okay. I'm in the space, and uh, I really admire what you guys are doing, and I just wanted to just build that start okay, now, now let's say, let's say you get in that room, and there's another end guy, but maybe that end guy is in a different industry, or does something different, but he's still the guy. Do you make it? Do you make? Do you make it? Uh, um, do you make sure that you go speak to that person too? I would say, you look for an opportunity. So we're a pod, we're, so we podcast. Yeah, you mm -hmm. say we podcast, right? And there's a head of Spotify. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then there's a head of Warner Brothers or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's still media. Yeah, but we're not interested in. We're not trying to do movies right now. Nah, I mean. Well, this is this is <laughs> Warner, Warner Brothers I'm, is in the podcasting space. Now, okay, uh, right. So let's call it let's call it let's call it uh, Paramount. Okay, okay. Let's call it Paramount. Let's call it Paramount. Yeah. Okay. That guy. Mm hmm. Yeah. I if I see if I know he's in the building, I'm looking for an opportunity to go speak. I got you. I'm definitely looking for. I'm not gonna force. I'm not gonna be okay. as aggressive as, as aggressive I, yeah. as I am as I am with Spotify. Uh -huh. But I am looking for an in. I and if I do get it. Okay. I'm not gonna try to be like, I'm gonna look to break the ice on some casual conversation. Okay. Like, th and this is where like, that's what I was saying. Like, getting out early and just networking and bumping your guns is important because sometimes you could 
end up striking good conversation through meaningless conversation. You know what I mean? By just getting to, yeah. by just building with people. You know what I mean? And before you know, we realized we got some, we found something in common in two minutes. Cool. Now we lean on that. You yep. know what I mean? Because you know, you're not in the same space, but this is a good relationship to have. Yep. It's a good, and people, we're all people. We all like meeting new people. You know yep. what I mean? So you never know. You may be able to charm, charm somebody and may be able to open up a door for yourself later on down the, down the line. Yep. But again, I wouldn't force it. And I, I wouldn't be as aggressive as to find my way in. Um, but I would be looking for the opportunity. Like if I seen dude by at the bar by himself for a quick moment, I, I would be trying to get over there. Oh yeah, I'm over there. I'm trying to get over there. I'm oh, trying to get over. There. Hey, bro, what you drinking? Like you said though, most importantly, <laughs> people are people, man. People are people. Everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time. You gotta remember that. And I feel like when you approach people and you just approach them really humane, and just as another human, as another person, and we've all done it. To where it's just like somebody looked at you speaking to whoever it is and be like, man, you was real confident talking to bruh. That, that. You was real confident <laughs> talking to bruh. You just walked up to him and you just started talking That's to him. That's how you break it. That's how you get in. It's like, wow. Why was you so confident, man? We just we just saw people, bro. Yep. That's it. Because I feel like even that person gets so many people that come to him like this, very small, that when they get somebody, they even like, who is this guy? Like that. I like that. I like this guy came up to me real confident. Yep. I don't know who he is, but and a lot of times, man, that's all you that's all that's all you really have to showcase. But I hope you back it up though, because that's just an intro. It's mm -hmm. just like dating. It's just like dating. Yep. That's an intro. Okay, cool. You Great get a first impression. You get a second call. Follow it up. Mm hmm <laughs> All right, now that we're here, man, let's let's talk about some things we want y'all to stop doing when y'all see us out or y'all slide into our DM. All right. Yo, we know, we know we growing, we know we going places, I. Right? But look, check it, you got to step to us correctly. No proper now. Step to us correctly, all right, look, listen, do not, do not see me out and whisper sweet nothings in my ears talking about, hey, bro, hey, bro. you got to bring me on the podcast. Because I'm going to look at you like, what you doing? That hot ass whisper. Get that hot ass breath <laughs> off me, off my ear, man. You know my girl? Get up off me. Because I'm going to look at you like, okay, well. Why do we need to bring you on the podcast? And if you say, I just need to talk my shit, I'm going to slap you in your face. <laughs> I'm going to slap you in your face. I'm going to just slap you in your face. Yo, have something to offer, man. If you want to come on a podcast, just have something to offer. Have, 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 if you watch the podcast, then you know the subject matter. And you know that we just don't be out here talking about goofy stuff. You know what I mean? We're not just out here talking about, like, okay. I'll give you an example. Yo, our podcast, yes, we talk about women. Yes, we talk about relationships. Yes, we talk about dating. But it's, it's. What's it giving? It's giving grown. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what it's giving. It's giving grown and, and it's giving substance and it's giving respect. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if you say, hey, I want to come in your podcast because I got some stuff to say. I'm already going to assume that, oh, you just want to talk shit. Yep. But then I go to your page and the way you're talking about women is just disrespectful, right? Everything is geared towards negativity. Everything is geared towards um, just extreme takes and clickbait. Then I'm going to look at you and say, oh, you're not for us. Now, I understand the need to have conflicting opinions for a good show, Right. Because we learn from people that think differently from us. I understand that. But the thought process or I, I guess the way of messaging should be in alignment. All right. So if I know you think differently than I do, but you're still solution oriented and you still you still speak with respect. Right. Because you could be a woman who think who's one of the, you could be a feminist woman who doesn't even like men. Right. But the way you talk about men is in a manner where, OK, it's digestible and it's solution oriented and you're open to receiving my, my my feedback. Oh, we could talk. But if it's not that, then um scram. Scram. You know, you gotta you gotta if you wanna network properly, you gotta have patience. And I think people try to move too fast and try to foster the relationship way too fast. Mm -hmm. Like, let us meet, let us speak, let us follow each other, see what see what I'll see what you're about, you see what I'm about. And let us communicate, maybe see see each other again. And then we could talk about, hey, 
do you want to come on my podcast or hey i want to come to your podcast or i would love to come on your podcast and talk about this mm -hmm. and that this needs to be incongruent with just our our show you get what i'm saying and if it's not then it's just like all right now you just want to talk now you just want a platform that you you think our platform is just a a whatever platform that you could just hop just on. A whatever, like we'd be having whatever conversation. You think you, think you could just hop on our, our platform and just because you're the homie or just because, you know, we associates, but like, yo, it's not it's not like that. Nowadays we really gotta vet people and see, okay, does this person align with our platform? If we bring this person on, does this person re represent nice and neat the way we want nice and neat to be represented? Do we think this person will give us good conversation or value from the conversation? Um, so it's impossible for us to have that answer when we first meet. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people meet us and they say, yo, y'all got to bring me on a podcast. And it's just like, how do we know that? It's like asking, it's like trying to ask a girl to, uh, to take her home and get in bed with her on the first night. It's like, yo, we still got some building to do here. Mm -hmm. We Come haven't on. even met each other. You being lazy. You being lazy right now. Come and on, actually, man. I don't even like that. I'm actually hey, turned hey, off by yeah, this hey, shit right hey, now. court me. <laughs> Seriously. Court me. Hey, I'm the baddie here. Okay? <laughs> Court me. No, that's real. That's real. <laughs> nah, so yeah, I think that that's all put in, but I, at the same time, it's an interesting space because these are things that we got to take into account when we network ne network with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we think, when we see there's people that we meet and I've met people that I would love to collaborate, but I never say, hey, let's just collaborate because you come in too strong. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you are, when you come in too strong, it makes people want to repel you. Or maybe even too vague too. Too vague. Not specific. Not, not specific. Or, or collaborate on what? Or you don't you don't paint the value. Yep. Sometimes you just don't paint the value. So, okay. Oh, you had an incredible week. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago at the Super Bowl, you were networking. It's been a while since you actually did this. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're down there at Radio Row. Um, I'm sure it's been some time, so it wasn't as chaotic as it has been in the past for you, but I'm sure people recognize you, right? And we're talking about networking. Obviously, you were trying to network and you were trying to accomplish certain things while you were there. But what about the people that was trying to ne maybe not ne necessarily network with you, but they came up to you and they wanted to speak. So if they just walk up to you and they're just like, hey, yo, oh, Denver Broncos, right? How did that make? How does that make you feel now, 10 years removed from the game? Like, How does that make you feel? Well, I would say in that particular space, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make me feel any kind of way. It would actually probably feel uh, right on time, to be honest, in that particular space. But if I'm not moving in that particular NFL football space, I would feel like, well, this person hasn't really had a chance, got a chance to understand who I, who I am in the past 10 years. Because they're still living off of, you know, something I did a decade ago. Um, so, I mean, I would have a conversation with them. I'm not so sure how far the conversation will go, you know what I mean? Or if we will even begin to build a relationship after that. Because, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel like when, whenever you're networking with somebody, like, I'm not currently playing football. Yeah. So why would you leave with that? What's I'm, the, well, it's like, what, networking is kind of like a, what have you done for me lately kind of space. What are you doing lately? Right. I mean, it kind of tells me. It kind of tells me that I'm not doing enough. Yeah, I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough. I haven't, I haven't done enough to forge a new identity. Yeah, for you to for you to recognize me as what I'm doing now. And that, but that's great. What's crazy is is that could be totally false. Yeah, right? it could be. It that could person be. could be just so out of the loop. It with, could be. You know what I mean? It could be. That so you got to be careful with that. Yeah, with having that thought because that's that's a very easy thought that could creep into your mind. It could be. Yeah, because I'm sure people will walk up to could, Dion be. and be like, "Hey, man, them Cowboys teams that you were on, I love those teams." I got you. Yep. And Dion could be like, "Bro, all that all, all that I've done since '96." Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, all that right. I've done since then. This yeah, is what yeah. you bring up. But that no telling who they were at that time, sure. how it impacted their life. And Somebody told me. Sorry to cut you off, That's but it, it just made me think about it. Somebody told me that, uh, since we're kind of talking about football and the Super Bowl, somebody told me that 8701 to them was better than confessions. Slap that person. Okay. So, so ultimately, <laughs> ultimately what we got to 
was the way that it impacted him at that time yep. is what it made it feel mm-hmm. like it was better. It just felt better to him because of what he was going through, where he was at in his life. It felt better. So I his feel like... perception is the false reality, though. Right? Most people... <laughs> I mean, even the way that we might approach somebody. Yep. So we might approach somebody, and this is why I think it's, it's, it's almost kind of dangerous to approach somebody as strictly a fan and not treat them as a human first, because you might be fanning a space in their life that they're trying to actually get away from. Yeah. I, I would say, though, the only thing, the only playing devil's advocate here, that could be the, my way of connecting with you. Yeah. To get into the conversation. Like, this is, this is my way in. And, yep. you know, it's not going to stay here long. It's mm-hmm. not gonna stay here long at all. But like, this is how I'm getting you to stop. Okay. Right now, you on a mission. Yeah. You, I can see you. You on a mission, and I'm just trying to get you to stop because I got something to talk about. So for those people, it could work if you got something else to follow up with, right? Because that could be. A, we can't fault somebody for using that as an introduction. So you're right, right? You gotta use all your weapons. You gotta use but, all your but, weapons here, Brett. I, I feel like this, right? If I know <laughs> that that's not what I'm trying to end with, I won't start with it. I, I, I'm gonna give an example. Okay. Hey, Omar, Omar Bolden. You a bad boy. Now, your eyebrows is raised and you listening. Yep, yep, yep. Because you're like, what exactly? (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) Tell me more. If that's what your approach is, it's like, tell me more. You a bad boy. Now I could be like, man, it was times when I used to watch you where you was just getting me through, man. You did some things on the field that I couldn't expect. Man, what you up to these days? Oh, that's great. And now you're just like, oh, man, he showed me respect. Yep. He acknowledged me. He know who I am. Yep. I might as well tell them what I'm up to these yeah, days. <laughs> facts. I might as well. And I feel like there's ways to get to everything that you're trying to get to, but it's just about how you craft the conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, we've all had to be in, and, and fellas, like, I need you guys to understand networking is really crafting a conversation the same exact way you'll craft a conversation with a woman. You craft it to, okay, what's this guy going to like? What's going to be appealing for, for, for him? And, and, People can say, like, oh, I'm not doing all that. You ain't trying to get what you need. Mm-hmm. So, Omar, you a bad boy, bro. You a bad boy. Even if you want to give you a highlight. Man, I remember that game against the Colts, bro. You took it 72? Y- yep, yep. Man, that was crazy, man. That got me that got me through some times. Hey, man, what you up to now? I see you out here at the hey, Super Bowl. What go. you up to now? Yep. You know, so, like. In that, it's like now it's you You got full control of a conversation while still giving somebody their props. Mm-hmm. It's difficult to do, but you got to do your homework. But also, too, that's also understanding, going back to people, right? And understanding humans, bro. Like, one thing about people, bro, we all want to feel good, bro. Oh, flattery. Make somebody feel yeah. good, bro. Yeah. Make, you, bro we without think about, doing too much. Without doing too much. We yeah. think about it all the time when we're approaching women, but you got to approach every relationship, potential relationship Yep. Of people not like make, that. Not people make you feel good. Hey, bro, you been lifting you lift the weight? Hey, way? bro, you, hey, you, hey. Are you been lifting the weight? Solid, bro. Okay, man. That's not, See, that, that's, that's how that, people make you feel good. Yeah, that's, that's not somebody who could walk up to you the first time. <laughs> No, no. Sometimes, no, sometimes, I mean, it it's, depends. sometimes, it depends. It's, sometimes it's not. It's not physical contact, but sometimes, like, hey, yo, like, this, or, or older guy can say, "Man, when I was young, I used to look like that." Yep. So, dude, I feel like I feel like, uh, man, you just you just. You're tough to get. You're tough to get a hold of, right? <laughs> Somebody want to network with you. You know, you are you 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 control your the way you you speak. You your relationship is pristine. You speak well. You walk tall. And I now see Duke. I want to say something to Duke. How, how am I getting your attention? How do you get to interact with me? Yes. How do I get the ability to interact with Duke? I can't say that publicly. <laughs> I can't say that publicly. Nah, but uh, honestly, honestly, I'm. If you see me out, and, and I've heard this before, people like to say, "Man, you look mean sometimes." Right? You guys told me this. My mom, my mom told me this before. My my woman says, "Man, you 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 look like you're not really approachable and you're intimidating." I'll be smiling on this couch, y'all, my homies. But <laughs> out and about. Usually I'm in situations where I'm just focused and I'm, I'm in business, so I could come off like that. But honestly, man, if you just come up to me, if you see me, and you're like, "Hey, yo, Duke, man, I watch the podcast. I love the podcast." I'm gonna say, "Thanks, bro. What's your name?" Yeah, yeah. I'm just say, "Yo, man, appreciate you. Much love. What's your name?" You know, and then we can just talk. If you say, "Hey, I've been doing this," or "I live this," then I'm gonna say, "Okay, cool. How, how you like that place?" Or 
you know, oh, you you do podcasting too, or you know, things like that. We'll start the conversation, but usually, it's not hard. It's not hard, bro. It it could be whatever. Hey, yo, I really love the way you talk about your woman. I watch the podcast. I really love you and the boys. You know, hey man, yo 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 your Instagram videos, man, it's been getting me through some stuff. Whatever the case may be, you mm-hmm. know, like it's real easy. Honestly, it's real easy. People overcomplicate it. Yeah, it's not hard because what happens is we think that. So we we place people on a level in our brains that make them seem like they're unreachable and that we can't speak to these people. We all we all do it. Mm-hmm. So because we don't know people personally, so we create this image of how they will react to someone who is not necessarily where they are. Mm-hmm. So we we look at ourselves like those people. So like I'm going to I'm going to convince myself that nah this person is probably too busy or he got too many things going on or people come up to him every day so I'm not going to say nothing. So we overthink it. But I said this a long time ago, like do not underestimate the power of high. Mm-hmm. Don't underestimate high. Just say what's up. Sometimes a lot of people will say yo what's up back? Like how are you? Cuz people love flattery at the end of the day. Yeah. All right? And most people ain't just walking around with just like Beyoncé where Yo, I got millions of people in my face every day that I got to, like, you know. Keep at bay. Keep at bay. You know, nah, that's not it. Most people is just like, yo, okay, what's up? Especially in situations where you actually get to speak. I don't have to remove myself out of the situation I'm in to speak to you. Yeah, what's what's going on? Mm-hmm. Hey, yo, I'm going to follow your Instagram. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll check your stuff out. And if your shit is in alignment, I'll follow you back. You guys... You guys, uh, when it comes to networking, you guys put yourself in rooms or positions to network, or is it more spontaneity for you guys? It has to be intentional for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I would say the same. So what's your most comfortable space to network? Oh, matter of fact, I'll ask you this. Do Oh, y'all both in the gym a lot. Mm-hmm. Y'all, do y'all get a lot of good networking done in the gym in a space that's just like that comfortable and vulnerable for you guys? I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't, the gym I go to, I don't really speak to a lot of people in the gym. And then I'm so, and I hate to say focus, we're all focused. But when I'm in the gym, I'm kind of, I, I hate to stay in the gym too long. Mm-hmm. All right. So I try to be regimented with a 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. And I try to get all my work done in those two hours. And I've had experiences where I felt like if I didn't get the work that I said I was going to get done in those two hours, I didn't really feel too high after that. So I try to be really, like I probably like stand on that, you know what I mean. Um, so I don't get too much networking at the, done at the gym. The, the gym for me, it, it's it's hit or miss, cause uh, I want to network when I want to network, not <laughs> not, when, not not when other people want to approach me to network. Uh-huh. Right? You know what I mean? Just, just like Duke, when I yeah. get into the gym, I'm focused, man. I got like I got two hours to get get this in, and I'm trying to lift, cardio, and steam room, and shower before I get home. In two hours. And if I could do it in an hour and 45 minutes, I'm taking that. I'm taking that. Yeah. I'm taking that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it, 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 it it's it's interesting, though, because there are times, though, when I'm in there and I'm like, man, I wish I would see somebody, you yep. know, th- that I could strike a conversation with because yep. today's a good day for me to. Today's a good day. Today's a good. But see, it it's again, it's hit or miss because it's, it's based off of what I have going on in my life, mm-hmm. you know? And those days are great usually when you kind of like don't even feel like working out like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I would say from like, from generally speaking, like it's not the best place to network for me. What's the best place to network for you? Ooh, some place where there's a bar. Some place where people are, now I'm not drinking, but, yeah. but it's much easier to talk to people when people have a drink in their hand. I've oh. learned. People are way more open, way more free, way more inviting and way more open to conversation. That's yeah. a good tip. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm looking at play, and again, you don't have to drink to go to these places to be, to find that opportunity because I don't drink, right? But I will grab a I will grab a ginger beer in a short glass and make it look like I'm drinking to make it look like that. I'm, why? Why though? Why? why? Because I, I don't want to seem like I'm judging people by not. Yeah. So I want people to have their guard. The reason why people another reason why it's great to talk to people while they're drinking is because they have their guard down, right? They'll be open. That you know, sometimes people say things they shouldn't even say. With the drink in their hand, you know what I mean. So, um, I don't want them to feel like they can't talk freely mm-hmm. because I don't have a drink in my hand, and I also don't want them to question me. I I eliminate all the questions because yeah. well, you got a drink because I got my drink in hand. If yeah. I don't, it's like, oh, you don't drink? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. It's like that shit don't even matter. Yeah. 
that shit is irrelevant to to what 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 my mission is. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, you know that, that's how I'm moving. I think the bar. What about you? For me, yeah, man, I like environments that I could control. If I'm, what does do, that mean though? If I'm gonna do my networking, right? And I, and and it's it's kind of cheat code for me. People come to me for sure. Mm -hmm. So. I know if I'm going to get a certain person that's going to sit down with me for an hour. I name my easy. business Golden Hour easy. because I'm going to make sure you sit here for an hour so I can give you everything I want to give you. Yep. Yep. So for me, it's, 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 kind of a, it's kind of a cheat code. Now, if it's something outside of that, it's very, very, very intentional. And it's like, I'm, sit, I'm sitting down, me and my lady, we sitting down and it's like, hey, yo, what, what do we want to accomplish from this? Like, what does that look like? Okay, what do you think? I am, am I missing anything here? Like, because this is what I want from this person. I want them to give me X, Y, and Z. And she's like, Oh yeah, you missing this? Okay, okay, for sure. And I, I talk to people every single day, so speaking is not difficult for me. Mm -hmm. It's just about what I want. And I feel like in networking, a closed mouth doesn't get fed, but you also don't want to spew out everything. Mm -hmm. So if I'm like, Hey, yo, I I want to get more eyes on my business and I'm talking to you know somebody that's a part of the chamber of commerce for the city I'm not gonna say hey who can you send over to my business no I'm gonna talk to him like hey yo you know so what's going on in the, in the community in the neighborhood and what does that look like and what does this look like and how can I be a part of this what do you want to join right because I feel like being able to offer something is extremely important I don't think anybody's gonna say offering something is bad I don't think that it will ever be bad so for me, just like the spaces are always intentional when it's not them coming to me. Mm -hmm. Very, very intentional. They have to be. I, so, And I actually kind of find it tough now being a father mm -hmm. and leaving my house for something that I didn't receive a benefit from. Like it's just tough for me. And I understand there were seasons, and this is the thing too. I'm sure you guys could, you guys could understand this. We're just not at the age no more where we just like leave the house to be seen, just to be seen. Mm -hmm. Just to be seen. And like that was a space. That was a kill, space. That was a space. Yep. And, it, and it added value too, to where it was like, oh man, you the dude who you got the clothing brand. Like, oh, you oh, you got to cut hair. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, for sure. That was a space. And I feel like now at this point, we're all pretty established in what we're trying to do and we know how to get closer to what it is that we want. But what about those things that it's not a guaranteed networking event, but you know it can be. Like, how do you maneuver in that space? How do you make yourself even feel comfortable in saying, I can enter this space and I could potentially walk away with something, but I also could potentially walk away with nothing? I was, I mean, you approach them the same way you approach the, 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 the network event that is like actually destined or designed for you to be there. There are events that we have that we throw amongst ourselves that are just the homies. But mm. if you look at it, got you. if you yeah, look yeah, at yeah. it from a different perspective, it could be an incredible networking That's opportunity for you. Like, I don't yeah. know this person as well as yeah. you may know him. I was networking at your baby show. You see what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. You That's see true. what I'm saying? So you, it, it just, it's all that's about true. your perspective. Like all these opportunities where there are people, mm -hmm. group of people together, that's a networking opportunity. Wow. It's just how you look at it. Yep. If you approach it like, I'm going to come fresh, I'm going to be open to conversation. And I'm going to be talking about the things that I could offer people of, of my value, you know, yeah. with my value. That, that could, every event could be incredible for I'm you. I'm glad you said, let's have some fun. Oh, let's do it. All right. What about the people who feel like they have to be at every event because everything is a networking event? <laughs> what? Uh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> right thirsty. You, you just call it everything network you're just thirsty you just want you just want to be out and you just want to be seen and you just want maybe maybe it's something maybe you just hate home mm. maybe you don't like your space mm. maybe you don't like the person you live with you know maybe you don't like being bored but it's not just i just want to network because i know that's people the, that say it all the, the time that's the blanket like, oh yeah, no, I'm just going, it's networking. I'm going, it's, it's networking. I'm going to hang out at the studio. It's networking. I'm on a, it's networking. And it's like. So when people say that though, when people say that, <laughs> and it's just always, it's networking, it's networking. That's just, y'all, you know, I'm just going to put myself in this position and hope, hope somebody says something to me. Mm -hmm. That I'm just going to put myself there, but I'm not going there with a game plan. I'm not going there with being intentional. I don't know who's going to be there. I'm just going there. And I think 
it's just saying it's just it's just a it's just a blanket over it, but it's not really. I, I wouldn't consider it real networking. Yeah. Time and time and time again, nah. I don't think you get anything accomplished. Okay. You should sit some things out. I feel like we've been talking about the initial meeting, right? Let's say you go to a said networking event and you land the big fish. You get the contact, you land the big fish. This What's the next step? This is good. Next the, step, go ahead. You you got to follow up. You got to follow up and and reestablish the text, email, phone call. Why it is why we even started this relationship in the first place? Because people, it's a network event. You're not the only person that they met, right? For and sure. you, you, you weren't the last. Again. You weren't the first. You weren't the last. You know what I mean? They met a tons of people, right? So let's let's let me go over the things that we talked about the party. I know it was a little loud and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I want to get back to the mission and tell you why 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 we're here. So I, I think taking the initiative to reach out to the person to reestablish why you created the relationship in the first place should be number one. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of us have, again, 1,200 contacts in the phone uh, because we weren't able to nurture those relationships, those seeds that we planted. We just dropped seeds not knowing how to take care of them or how to, how to water the plant, take care of it, and it didn't, you know, um, muster into anything, you know? So, yeah, so to, to me, to me it's, it's got to be the follow-up because I feel like that's where a lot of us drop the ball at, and that's where a lot of us don't... Okay, follow-up follow up one day, two days, next week. Until until you get the conversation going so, that you're looking for, like for instance, for I met somebody. For I, I walk into this event, this girl, this girl goes, this lady goes, "You a former player?" I was like, "Yup." I, I walked into the general mission line. Okay, uh, uh, someone who represents players was like, "Yo, you a former player?" I didn't say anything. I'm like, "Yeah." She like, oh, "You need to just go to the front, tell them you a former player. They're gonna get you right in." I was like, I kind of like. I had like one of these moments, like my mouth was, I kind of exaggerated how I was feeling in the moment. She saw it. She was like, yeah, you need you and me. You need you and me in your life. You know what I mean? And I was like, I do. I do. I was like, I do. I was like, let me grab your contact, right? I had her up the following week. I gave her a week. It was a whole week that went by. Yeah, I gave her a, it, it was whole a whole of week of, on. yeah. Whole uh, shit going on. Whole bunch of shit going on. Take that into account too. You got to take it. You got you to understand like where you met this person at and give them, give them some time to breathe. I reached, I gave her a little legitimate week. I reached out. I was like, hey. You know, just joking. Hey, I, I need me a you in my life. And she was like, hey, uh, it was great meeting you. I'm actually doing All-Star. So, like, reach back out again next week. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, that's one step. That's another step. Okay, cool. I'm going to reach back out. I have, I don't, we'll, we can resurface this conversation. I'll tell you exactly what's really happening within that relationship. But, like, it's up to me to figure that shit out. I got to follow up. Yeah. And I got to continue following up until I follow through. Yeah, because... Cause she got used, you don't got a her. You feel you feel what I'm talking about? Yeah. You feel what I mean? So you, it's, so it's, she got leverage. What you saying? Yeah, she, she's provi right now. She's providing the value. She sees value in him. Yep. Uh -huh. But right now she's providing the value. Yep. Right. She sees value in him, so it's his job to close the gap. Yep. I got you. Yep. By any means. Yeah. So I, I would say that is first and foremost. Um, you know, the the, the next thing after you follow up. I would be, I would say it's now to maintain, right? Now, the follow up is to reestablish why we're having the relationship. And then now I, I got to periodically tap back in to maintain the relationship, yeah. to, to make sure that this seed is continually, continuing to grow and blossom into the plant, the fruitful plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you mar know? and marketing, they call that nurture. Yeah. You got to nurture the audience. So, Duke, I'm going to ask you, right? I, I, I kind of see this being a problem for some people, but I want to see how you bypass it. I, th I think a lot of people look at a relationship and they look at it as transactional, like, what's my ROI, right? What is going to be my return on investment on this relationship? And I feel like people look at where they are today. People look at where they think they're going to go, so they just don't necessarily invest in this specific relationship, mm. right? When you say nurturing, do you nurture relationships even when you're not in the season of needing that specific relationship? Yes, I think you do because you don't know that you need that specific relationship, but you do know you need relationships. You just know you need people, you know, and you may see something in someone who may just seem like a good friend or, or may seem like a good gym buddy. These are nurturing. Hey, look, I just met you. Um, hey, actually, this actually happened a lot this past summer. 
the last time. Hey, I just met somebody. Hey, y'all, my homie's having this event, and you should come through. You, you and your wife should come through. I didn't want nothing from them. But I just know that as adults, it's hard to meet friends and hard to meet new people. So, like, hey, why not? Yeah. So just come through immediately. So I met you, and I'm extending an invitation to you right now so we can stay top of mind. Mm hmm all right, and then we nurture the relationship through, okay, I got a friend's giving, hey, come to the gym, hey, yo, here's this and here's that. So when opportunity, because the opportunity may not even come for you. It may come for someone else, and I'm top of the mind. Mm -hmm. I'm top of mind. So, oh, yeah, my, my boy Duke, he does this. Right? So the opportunity is not direct. So just, the opportunity comes from, from A, from me just nurturing the relationship with B. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if if... Like sometimes we just we just think that the the benefit or the opportunity that we're looking for is coming from specifically from the person, you know, but it could come from the person's friend or business partner or whatever the case may be. So, yes, to answer your question, I personally still do see value in networking with someone, even if I can't see the immediate benefit in that person. And that's just I try to move like that. But let me ask you all this, though. What are some pet peeves that y'all hate? about networking when people try to network with y'all or maybe people try to work out with you or mm -hmm. you know get on a podcast what are some pet peeves and things you guys hate mm -hmm. well that you I, guys that happens a lot this, this is gonna sound crazy because it's like yo oh you did say this is like one of the good places for you to network but like being at a i said being at a place where they serve drinks so there's a bar there but people trying to come up to me and network or converse and they've had a little too much to drink Mm -hmm. uh, just a little too sloppy you know what I mean don't do that that's that's a big no no for me be control if you're gonna be at a place where there are serving beverages and you're drinking an adult one control it be able to control your liquor and handle it you know what I mean because yeah. we're not here to have drunk conversations sloppy at least I'm not and that, that's a huge pet peeve huge turn off for me mm -hmm. you know and usually those people come up come up to you and like interrupt something that you got going on already yeah. anyway you know, so yeah. I, I that's a huge pet peeve for me. What about you, Jamal? I don't like not being able to recognize somebody's value before I recognize that they value me a little bit more. I like to, I like when people have kind of like a conversation. I don't want it to be started off with a bunch of compliments, you know, possibly a photo ask, and then try to get into a conversation to talk because... For me mentally, I don't feel like you feel like you bring enough to the table to just have a networking conversation. Now you like a fan. You like a fanboy right now. Right? That makes me feel, honestly, it just kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. Because yeah. I, I truly feel like people are people. So when that's the nature of the conversation, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. And it's I put you out of distance immediately. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of come to me and we are able to just, because I'm, I'm cool, bruh. You come and you just bring up, like, hey, man, this last episode, when you guys were talking about this, that was kind of crazy. You know, like, that's cool. We could talk about it. I actually don't like when you put your opinion, though, to me. That's not something that I like. I don't like when somebody says, I didn't agree when you said this. It's... <laughs> 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 as, 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 I mean, because let's just look at <laughs> just it like this. the comment section, bro. Hey, they're trying, yeah. they trying to rehab the conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I said what I said. I said what I said. I said what I said. I said what I said, you know, and um, we have the final edit on everything that we do. And if it released, I said what I said. I said what I said. Trust me, I watched it. You know, so that's something that kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. What I do <laughs> love, though, in networking is when somebody comes and they start talking about what it is that they do, and I could connect with their value immediately. So, like, I think the easiest people to network. I think if you are a photographer, you should never walk into a room and not network. If you are a videographer, you should never not walk into a room and not network. Everybody needs one of those, mm -hmm. and I feel like that space is so nuanced, people don't know that you're not good until they realize you're not good. So you can get one job from everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think that, like, those jobs, you should always be networking. It, this thought just came to my head, too. But, like, how do you feel about, I guess this may be even be something that I don't like, too. Like, if, we're, if you, we are in a, in a place where we're beginning to network and it's time to exchange contacts or information, right? If your socials aren't popping, I wouldn't lead with the socials. There's nothing saying that we have to connect via social right here in this yeah, moment. That's true. We could connect. I could take your phone number. 
and and we could and take your email and, and be just good like that. That's true. We're in a, we're in a space where today people feel like all of a sudden I have to show you my Instagram. Yes, because it's the quickest way to get an idea of what sure, it's about. Sure, but I don't have to leave with that. That's my that's that's a choice of mine. Yeah, but if you don't give me your Instagram, then like, well, I, then, then, but the next person give me their Instagram. Is that out of sight, out of mind. I'm not. I'm not calling you. But if it's I, not. A, get, but it's not up to you though. It's up to me. I'm getting your contact. What I'm saying. You is, know what I mean. What I'm saying is okay. Look, I'm a photographer, a videographer. That's different. I'm not talking about those guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not talking about. Like, okay. What if I'm an angel I, investor? I got you. What if I'm an investor? I got you. That's you got different. Two hundred followers, and, and I got two hundred followers. But I, I got, got bread. I got you. I'm not leading with my Instagram. I got you. You know what I mean? I'm not those those yeah. those specific jobs. Okay. That's different. Yep. I that's got different. you. I got but you. I'm talking about someone who may not work in if any anything that deals client with facing. Yes. You know what I mean? I you know so I don't that that just randomly I, popped in my head. Another thing that popped in my head is you saying that saying that um, don't try to sell me anything. That's I don't I, I don't think you should try to sell anybody anything when you first meet them. That's what I'm saying. You gotta nurture that, man. That yeah. that is really where the nurturing comes in. Even if you walk up, up to them and you say, up, "Hey, I'm a videographer." If you are adamant about it and you believe in your work that much and you almost want to talk about giving them a service, I'll say give it to them for, for free, free before you want to charge somebody cuz it's it, it makes it it makes it uncomfortable for people when first and foremost none of us want to spend any money that we don't have to spend. Yeah. Like I didn't come to meet people to spend money. I didn't. So when somebody you meet somebody and they be like, "Hey man, hey, you should check out my website, man. You know all everything is on there, man. It's half off, man. You should you should check it out though. It's good right, stuff right. on there. Like it's good stuff on there. You should check it out. All right, for sure, yeah, bro. He's selling you obviously too hard not too many people checking products. it out. If you got me, <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't believe in selling anything to anybody first time. I believe if somebody even tries to tell you to sell something to them, downplay it. Be super modest. Hey, man. Hey, Jalan is Jalan, one of the best barbers. I know you got to go check them out, man. Like, man, hey, man, I know you probably already got a barber or something, bro. If you do, it's all good. If not, I'm available. Come through. Mm -hmm. But I'm never going to be like, oh, yeah, bro, I got competitive prices, everything. Never, bro. I don't even, I don't even show mirrors. Because you're trying to convince. Hey, I, yeah. would, I would say, though, like, there's an art in selling you without, like... No, no, selling. It, selling you is basically saying, hey, I, I can provide value to you, but I don't want you to buy anything from yeah. me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I don't want you to buy yes. anything. I'm not I'm not offering you, you nothing You almost right kind of keep it like a mystery to where you're like, what does that guy sound? Yeah. I kind of yeah. do want to know what... Yep. But like, if you just give him everything... You know, again, it's like dating. You give them everything, there's nothing to come back for. So, like, selling them, telling people your pricing and doing all that, that's not effective networking. Like, I wouldn't, I would never tell a woman how much I make on our first date. Nope. I wouldn't. I don't care how much I made. It's, it, it, it just, it's, it's tacky on all fronts, I mm -hmm. believe. So, but I, I don't, don't sell me anything. Not, not while we're networking. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> What's the, don't sell me nothing. Don't sell me anything. I, I like think it. I think like like I said, man. If I if I'm, I think for me it's just we all have a pretty good idea of the type of people that we want to work with, partner with, network with, right? And ideally, we want to partner and network with people that's directly across from us, mm -hmm. not up or down, but directly across. And I just think that you got to read the room. And you got to have the awareness of who you are and what you've done and what you have to offer. And so I know everyone's socials don't always represent their exact like value. But if someone, if you looked at your social, socials and you looked at your stuff and, and, and you were us or you were this other person, like, would you work with yourself? And then ask yourself, the people that are reaching out to you, reaching out to you, that you look at their socials and you don't you don't see that they have value. Are you working with them? So good questions to ask. You have to ask that question because I'm, I'm fair. Yeah, I'm fair. You got to ask that question. So it's a pet peeve when people come up to you and they say, "Hey, let's work together without establishing rapport, without nurturing a relationship, without providing clear value to you, without even seeing if you guys." align these are things that people just do just because they want the platform mm -hmm. if i just feel like you're just trying to take advantage of the platform it turns me off mm -hmm. 
Because now you don't even care about the person. You know, you don't care about the person. You just care about the platform. And that's the quickest way for me to be like, nah, you good. You thirsty. Because you haven't made it clear to me. So those are the things that, that I, li- I don't like. I, think, I guess the last thing I'll say that I, I don't like too in terms of networking is the people who within an initial meeting tend to over promise uh. mm-hmm. and under deliver with the things that they're talking about in terms of what they could offer. Mm-hmm. Like if you, if you do decide to come step and introduce yourself and we're building and you're saying what you bring it to the table, stand on that. Stand on that. Don't, don't, don't have us link in a week from now and follow up a week, 10 days from then and we don't get any of the things that you were talking about accomplished or even the ball rolling on none of that. Like have your P's and Q's in order. Make sure that whatever it is that you're coming up to, talking about that you have to bring to the table, you are 100% standing on that. Mm-hmm. Like this is what you live, this is what you breathe, this is what you eat, this is what you sleep. Because if not, you're just wasting everybody's time. And nobody, I personally hate wasting my time, especially when I felt like, damn, this dude got me. This dude jerked me, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this dude jerked me, bro. Yeah. This dude just wasting my time. Like, I really, I, I thought we had something going right here. <laughs> that, that, oh, man, that, that's, um, that, 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 that eats me up right there. I had a question going out that you just kind of cleared up. And the question was going to be, how do you make yourself memorable? And I kind of think when you believe that somebody eats, sleep, and breathe what they're talking about, that makes them really, really memorable. Mm-hmm. And especially if it's a need that I have. But I ask you, dude, what makes what 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 makes somebody memorable? What makes you memorable? What is a, a tip you could give the audience to be able to be the best version of themselves while networking? Okay. Small nuance. But remembering people's names. That's not small at all, bro. Makes you memorable. Yeah. All right. Like, yo, what's your name? Omar. Yeah. Omar, nice to meet you. I'm Duke. Omar, so where you live? Yeah. Okay. So, so, oh, like, yeah. Did you go to? Okay. Oh, hey, so Omar, I'm gonna text you. To, I'm gonna call you tomorrow. Right. So just keep, cause like most people, most people don't do that. Nope. When you have conversations with people, it's just okay. I hear your name one time, and I forget your name. But the more you tell me your name, or I tell you my tell you my name, or the more you hear me say your name, the more we build a relationship because it's familiar now. Yep. So you're gonna remember me based off the fact that okay, remember the dude that kept remembering my name. That's how you're gonna remember me. That's, that small thing is gonna make me memorable. So I try to make sure I do that every time I meet someone. Dude, oh, we, um, oh Tanner, oh what's going on Tanner? Nice to meet you, Tanner. I'm I'm Duke. So Tanner, bro, how long you been doing this? So Tanner, like, what brings you here? Tanner, you you see, you got a you got a girl. You, that's a very big deal. I know you said small nuance. It's small nuance. Yeah, it's not it's small at all. Small nuance. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a uh, a micro thought, but a ma- like macro progression in a relationship. Yeah. Because I know you guys can both remember somebody who you never expect to remember your name that said your name, and you never forget like mm-hmm. the moment when you're mm-hmm. like, dang, that guy. Man, gotta remember my name. Yep. Yep. He didn't even have to do that. Yep. I'm sure you also. I'm sure we also yep. remember moments where God be like, "Hey, man, I really appreciate you remembering my name, man." Sure. Like that. Hey, that that actually. I've had that happen to me yeah. even as recently. You know like, why though? Because it shows that you're paying attention. Yep. It shows that you're being intentional as well mm-hmm. in this conversation, and people can feel those things because you have so many just empty conversations with people when you just networking. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it's a numbers game. Yep. Okay, I'm on to the that next, too. I'm on to the next, I'm on to the next. Talk yeah. about that. I'm on to the next, 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 I'm on to the next. Yep. But when you actually slow down and you say, okay, oh, okay, where you from? Ontario? Okay, cool. And then you start, then you start saying things like, um, Colony's playing next week, going to the game. Yep. Things like that and yep. just inserting things that you know yep. connect. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. people say, okay, that, oh, he knows a little See, bit about football. Yep. I, you know, I was, I was, we didn't dive into it in this episode, but I think it's important to know just a little bit about everything. A little bit about everything. Yep. 
that's that goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the episode, bro. Like it's important sometimes when you're young to get out. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand and or try to adopt the gift of gap, man. Yeah. That could that won't take you a long way. Even just knowing just a little bit about the topic. Mm -hmm. Just so you could get off, you could just have a comment in the conversation where he could be like, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, shit, that was all I knew. That's it. That's hey, it. Hey, that was but all I knew. Though. Hey, but hey, but I threw it in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that you, you are right but about. But not that. only that though, giving people the opportunity to feel smart. Right? Allowing them to express their intelligence about a particular thing. For instance, okay, let's say, like sometimes or like let's say Chanel and she's talk I'm talk I'm talking to Chanel and she's like, I work at the Mac store. I'm just throwing stuff out, mm -hmm. right? And I'm saying, like, okay, cool. Like, oh, so you like makeup? Yeah, I like makeup. Um, that blusher foundation. So, 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 what is the difference between blush, blusher foundation? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because I thought blush, I thought blush was is oh, hold on. blush found. Oh, is, is blush the the the, <laughs> the pink good. thing? This no, I'm serious. You, and you and you know a little bit about it. Yep. Yeah. To let her explain to you yep. what it is. Yep. So the conversation could could go further, yep. but allows her to feel like the expert, and, which makes her feel good. And also, too, it allows that person to, it, it makes that person feel that you are really interested exactly. and curious about what's going on in, in their that's life. That's a skill, man. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a skill, talk. Yeah. Uh, so getting somebody to talk is a part of an art in networking. Just being able to get somebody to talk. Yeah. Because, you know... you. You know, usually somebody start off like this. Oh, what's going on, man? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Jalan. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I do nice and neat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you enjoy that? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I get a question and it's just like, hey, man, I'm, you know, I've been with my girl for seven years, man. It's just really, it's, it's been, it's been difficult, man. And I, I kind of could relate to you a lot, you know, on the podcast when it comes to this specific topic. And let's say it's something that I was passionate about. Not a fan. Now, has been now, a fall. Now I'm be like, so what did you take from it? You know, like, like what, what was your, what was your, your take on that? And then they gave able to give me a real take, to be able to, to now we could play tennis with a conversation. Mm -hmm. Got you. Let's roll. Oh yeah, let's roll now. Now we can roll. Now I know you're not just up here playing around. Yep. Like you serious? Like you're like, yo, if I see Jalan, this is what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've had moments like that. Hey, if I see such and such, this is what I'm gonna say. Yeah. And it goes exactly how you planned for it to go mm -hmm. when you do your homework. Mm -hmm. You gotta do your homework. Yeah. All right, man. Listen, fellas, anything else? Nah, I'm good. 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 Nah, I'm good. Ah, I'm good. I'm, you got anything good. to say? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, listen, y'all, really appreciate you guys for watching this episode and listening to this episode. Go ahead, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are approaching 75,000, something like that, on subscribers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, be sure to subscribe. Uh, make sure you guys are uh, subscribed to us on all streaming platforms and following us on all social platforms. Much love, much gratitude. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. This is another episode of Nice and Neat, and that's that on that. Peace. Take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old now, I got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm a gold pole four in the white sand.